first today is the solstice. It is the solstice. It is the solstice. It is the summer solstice here in the Northern Hemisphere, the winter solstice for those few people who are watching and live in the Southern Hemisphere, meaning it's the longest day of the year. Uh, it is the year during the moment during which also our twilights um, are actually lasting longest as well for the same reason as the longest day of the year. So um, first day of astronomical summer, historical midsummer. So Shakespeare's Midsummer's Night's Dream was about this moment, not a month and a half from now. Yeah, you alerted me to this fact before I, uh, I had not thought about it, but it makes yeah. a great deal of sense. Um, that uh, what we call summer would actually have moved, and we are now talking about in the same way that we have altered the meaning of time to become like laboratory time rather than yeah. time the way humans experience it. We have altered summer to be this uh, uh, solar solar def definition rather than either defining it around the way the seasons actually happen where you are or defining it um, where the maximal day length would be the middle of that period. We've defined it where it starts at this period where aliens begin to shorten. Yeah. And we, I mean, we could, it, it could be defined, midsummer could be the solstice, right? And that would also be astronomically global. I mean, that, that would be a truth that was that applied to the whole earth. But, you know, this nature of seasonality is so varied depending on where you are on the planet. I remember growing up in LA, as you did as well, hearing these aphorisms like, April showers bring May flowers, thinking... I don't think it's ever rained in April in LA. I used to shower in <laughs> April just right, sure. to see if I could get flowers yeah, happen and no it never seemed to at all. have nothing, any effect. But. Nothing. Yeah, the only, you know, the seasonality in LA, the Santa Ana winds that come in in September and October and start fires, there's there's no aphorisms about that. So um, summer solstice is a reality. It's, a, it's the solstice everywhere on the planet, winter solstice in the Southern Hemisphere, summer in the Northern, and uh, and here we are. Now the days get shorter, but slowly, um, but the days also get warmer for a while. So, Well, wait, before we, before we move on from the solstice, I wanted yeah. to say one other thing, which is there's, there's some facts about the solstice and other celestial events that I think need to be said out mm. loud because we just, the lesson is not, it's not well taught in general. And um, can, I'm going to interrupt you and say that you, I mean, we, but this was, this was one of the things that you led. When we used to teach together, you created a workshop that grew every time uh, with Oh, God, I should. I, I wasn't prepared for this, but um, you know, three pages of questions, like single line questions, like you know, tens and tens, closing in on a hundred questions, um, that you asked students to figure out, you know, what what they knew about it and whether or not they actually knew, or if they were just accepting something they've heard. Everything from, you know, what is the solstice to um, why are seasons. And, uh, you know, what are tides? What are tides and why are there two high tides a day? That's the one. That's the, the one that the was most standard. stumping yeah, of that's people. The most, yeah, the most stifling. Yeah. So yeah. what I wanted to say was um, that, A, um, I hope the uh, religious folks in our audience won't take this the wrong way, but there are certain facts about the universe that really strongly suggest that one of two things has to be true. Either the universe was not designed by an engineering entity that, wanted all this to happen, or it was, and that entity didn't like us or want us to succeed. <laughs> so <laughs> one of them is that the number of days in a year is not an integer, but it's close. Yeah. And because it's close, what that means is that for cultures that try to figure out how long the calendar is, they can't nail it because they tend to be one day long or one day short at least. And when you do that, you tend to think for some number of years that you've got it right because the vagaries, the noise of weather obscures the signal that you would detect as a slight shift every year of, you know, if you put the right day to plant is this day, it won't be way off for 20 years maybe, right? And you won't be able to detect it because of the, you know, the variation in the, in the seasons. Weather, weather is noise to the climate underlying it. Right. Mm -hmm. And so, anyway, cultures around the world have, there have been two, two things done. One is you try to calculate it better and better, and eventually you discover that it's not an integer, and you figure out what to do about that, and you insert something like leap year in order to correct for the slight shift, right? Mm -hmm. Which is, or, incidentally, why... This year, right now, the solstice is on the 20th rather than the usual 21st. This year was a leap year. And go. so we had the 29th that got in the way. And We're ahead of it. Other than that, yeah, we, it would be on the 21st as it usually is. Although, really, the solstice is a moment in time, not a day. And yep. so it's at mm, 5.30 p.m. something today. Anyway. And so we celebrate mm -hmm. short years, three years and four. Yeah. 
Um, That's right. So in any case, cultures have figured out another way to deal with this, which is not to go after the precision, which is so maddeningly difficult to nail, but it's to um, actually go empirical. And so you'll find all of these clocks built into... Uh, yeah. into, you know, mountainsides and structures, circular structures in which, you know, on the solstice, the sun comes through this window and, you know, lights up that corner. Actually, I should have brought a picture of the Kanyari version of this. But oh, yeah. um, but anyway, there's there are all of these calendars that are physical calendars that don't need to be calibrated because they are physical and the lining up of several things allows you to actually know what day of the year it is. So long as you don't have cloud cover. Right. Well, but I mean, you can still, as it approaches, yeah, you know, you, you're, you can you're sort it. of tracking it. Yeah. Um, but so uh, there it is. The basic point is the calendar has been frustratingly difficult to nail down. It's actually very late emerging that we have a good answer to how long the year is that we can actually hang our hat on. And mm -hmm. many cultures have worked around that by going empirical. And it's left all of this beautiful architectural evidence yeah. all over the world. Um, and, you know, a lot of it is convergent. This isn't necessarily cultures getting it from each other. They're discovering right. the same problem and solving it in the same way. Yes, there's certainly multiple evolutions of it. We know that Many. at Inga Perca, which is this Canyari Inca sort of collaboration in Ecuador, is obviously independent from Stonehenge. Right. And there are many other examples that are independently evolved. Um, arrivals at the same way, at the same problem, the same universal human problem of how is it that we figure out what this planet is that we're living on and when to plant. Really, I mean, there's a. I'm sure that there are other reasons that early humans, that you know, prehistory humans, just meaning before humans were writing, uh, needed to be accurate about the time of year. But agriculture is a huge one. Yeah. Right. And so we can expect that these sorts of empirical ways of telling time over the course of a year um, probably started to emerge. 8, 10, 12,000 years ago in the various places where agriculture started to emerge at exactly the same times. And again, independently, several evolutions, several independent evolutions of agriculture across the world uh, 10 and 12,000 years ago. And so actually, final point, um, this also, it actually tells us something about our current moment. There's something about the internet and all us interacting across arbitrary distances and time zones and all of that that's actually very disorienting. On the yeah. one hand, it alerts you to something true about the fact that you're on this planet full of people for whom it is not the same time of day and they may be in the opposite season. Um, but uh, it is disorienting in the sense that once upon a time and not so long ago, what where you were seasonally was not so much a question of the calendar that we all share it was a question of how the calendar interfaced with the particular ocean currents that were near you or whatever. And so I've always been troubled, for example, by the fact that we synonymize autumn with fall. My sense is fall is the period when the leaves are falling, mm -hmm. right? And that varies a lot. It's not. And in LA, for instance, there is no fall really. There's not unless yeah. you have, you know, elm you have trees, ornamentals. But, but, yeah, there's no yeah. one fall because the, the trees come from all over the place. Yeah. Um, in, but, an un, in a in a in a pre-Columbian LA, there was no fall. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, it just the the fact of you know even the discovery of time zones is is an interesting fact. And until then, the question of what time it was um, is a little odd because it, you know you don't have to ask because it's obvious what time it is at yeah. least you know yeah during the day most days well i mean actually zach our uh, producer and older teenage son just reminded me of uh something that he learned in in history this year and which which i knew as well um which is that it was actually the advent of trains um across the united states that forced cities and states and presumably the federal government to actually um, make uniform time because otherwise there, there was no need for it. But if, if a train's coming at a particular moment and you need to pick someone up, or you need to catch a train, you actually all need to agree on what time it is and what that means. There's no need for it because horses are just not fast enough. Even at a horse crossing uh, space, you don't have a disturbing discontinuity, whereas we now have... Well, the... but I, mean, I think more to, the, more to the point, you, you, you don't know for sure the horse is going to arrive at 4 p.m. You can say, I expect to be there before dark. You can send a letter and say, I'm hoping to be there before dark on the Saturday of the harvest moon or whatever it is, but um, there's not there's not a horse schedule the way there is a train schedule. That's not really true. <laughs> you know, in, in the 16th century, oh, the proto-fascists used to make the horses run on time, mm -hmm. which was... Yeah, uh, they, they famously, famously, I guess. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. Okay. It was also about making the train clock crash. 
Oh, Zach says he thinks it was also about making the trains not crash. So which, it was an aesthetic concern. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> yeah, one of these little tri- niggling concerns. Uh, so James Baldwin, who is um, you know extraordinary writer and thinker, was he's he's dead now. Um, had this to say, um, very short quote, but it seems like it it's a nice finish to us talking about the solstice to begin. He says, "Life is tragic." simply because the earth turns and the sun inexorably rises and sets, and one day for each of us, the sun will go down for the last, last time. Perhaps the whole root of our trouble, the human trouble, is that we will sacrifice all the beauty of our lives, will imprison ourselves in totems, taboos, crosses, blood sacrifices, steeples, mosques, races, armies, flags, nations, in order to deny the fact of death, the only fact we have. It seems to me that one ought to rejoice in the fact of death, ought to decide, indeed, to earn one's death by confronting with passion the conundrum of life. One is responsible for life. It is the small beacon in that terrifying darkness from which we come and to which we shall return. Wow. Yeah. So that's that's Baldwin. Um, That is incredibly powerful. It is. 